As you please, my Lord, I appear on behalf of the applicant, first applicant in this matter, uh, duly assisted by Mr. Florian Birkus. As you please. Please, Your Lordship, I appear on behalf of the second applicant. Thank you. Please, my Lord, uh, I appear on behalf of the state in this matter, together with Mr. Kitwezi and Mr. Ipinge. And what's on my feet, my Lord? Um, I have a slight request if the court, with the court's indulgence, I have an appointment with the doctor at. Uh, around 20 to 1, if the court will be with me, that uh, if you can adjourn around that time, my lord. Yes, my lord. Okay. Thank, thank you, my lord. Thank you. As you please, my lord. Um, we have no objection whatsoever, obviously. Um, my lord, we're ready to proceed. Mr. Birkus will continue to lead the witness, as you please. Thank you, my As you please, the court, you will. My lordship, uh, with the... Uh, Applicant one, please be called to the stand. <laughs> My apologies, Your Lordship. I'm, I'm just informing Mr. Makeup. I almost said Your Worship. <laughs> Council will continue to lead you. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. Mr. Yusuf, do you still have the bundle one there with you? The bundle that we referred you to yesterday. Correct, your lordship. Okay. Now, just a brief summation before we proceed so that we are not lost where we left off yesterday. Yesterday, you and Essen testified at least the last part of your testimony, that the, the MOU, it was workshop between the Namibian technocrats and also that of the Angolan part. And that Angola came back with a revised intention that they also wanted it to be a binding agreement. Hmm? Correct. And you, you considered that MOU that was then signed to be a valid binding agreement on both countries. Correct, your lot, sir. Okay, we can move on then from there. So where we ended off was at Exhibit K, if you can recall, and uh, point number 10, or where we ended. And if you turn to number 11, oh, let me rather ask before we go to number 11. So after this interministerial ministers meeting that was held on the 24th of February 2014, what happened in respect to the finalization of the MOU? Your Lordship, in terms of this interministerial meeting, which was attended by an official of our ministry then, uh, uh, Madam Aina Shekupe Ipinge, who was the deputy director in planning policy, policy planning and economics of the ministry. There was also an observation which I have read into the record yesterday, my lord, on page 9 and after this very internal interministerial meeting I was also briefed by the officials because my, I was not present at that very meeting and this very agreement the, the scrutinized agreement was cabled 
to, to Angola through the administration of the Ministry of Fisheries, my Lord. It has come to conclusion that the parties, both Namibia and Angola, has agreed instead of an understanding as it was suggested or advised by the office of the AG. That time it was Honorable Albert Tawana, the AG. And preparations were done after the February meeting that was now on the revised and agreement. Preparations were done. Preparations were done for the working visit to Angola, whereby we got all the authority in terms of the assignment of powers by His Excellency, then President Hifike Punya Pohamba, to go and conclude the agreement as it was also captured in the minute of the 24th of February. A, delega a delegation was composed by the office of the permanent secretary in the person of Madame Uritara Hiverwa, of which she was also a member of a de part of the delegation. And during the period of 17 to the 18th, the working visit went to Angola for the conclusion of that very agreement. When you say 17 to the 18th, uh, which month and year are you referring to? In fact, my Lord, I refer to 2014 in terms of Divider 12, mm -mm. whereby I was also briefed by the Embassy of Namibia in Angola on the political situation in Angola. Let us first deal with the delegation that went. Let us go to number 11 of that bundle. I am there, my lord. Can you please identify the document for us and briefly take us through it? It is a letter, a letter from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, dated the 9th of June 2014. Re subject invitation to for a working visit to the Republic of Angola for the signing of Memorandum of Understanding on Agriculture and Fishery Sector. It then goes on to say that following my letter to your office dated 3rd June 2014 with reference to the above subject I would like to submit the names of the officials that are to accompany our Honorable Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources to the Republic of Angola from 17 to 18 June 2014. And Correct. then there's a list of six officials. Firstly, you can take us through the list. The Mr. list yes, consists out of your, your worst, I mean, your Lordship, uh, consists out of Honorable Bernard Essel, the Minister, Two, Ulitara Hiverwa, Permanent Secretary. Three, Master Saki Shangara, Chairperson of the Law Reform Commission. 
four, Mrs. Aina Ipinge, Deputy Director of Policy Planning and Economics. Five, two officials, I mean officials, sorry, my lord, I beg the pardon. Embassy of the Republic of Namibia in the Republic of Angola. And six, two officials, Namibia Broadcasting Corporation. My lord. Now two of those officials are not here in court today. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's move on, Mr. Yeso. Mr. Shaki Shungala, he's one of the co-accused in this particular matter and the charges that you are facing, correct? Correct, my lord. Mm -hmm. Firstly, who decided on the designation or the or the parties that should accompany you on this meet? The on the strip, sorry. The delegation who accompanied me to Angola was determined by the office of the Permanent Secretary, Madam Uritara Hiverwa, hence the inquiries to her on this very letter, in terms of this very letter. So, since all the de delegations, my lord, are civil servants, with the exception of myself, I was a public servant, and they are paid for, my lord, on the votes of their respective ministries, and not on the vote of the minister, vote one of the minister. So the determination of these delegations came from the office of the permanent secretary, which was signed off by an acting permanent secretary called Master Boni, Bonifacius Amute. I submit, my lord. Do you know why Mr. Shaki Shangala was part of the designation. I don't know, my lord. I don't know. Because I don't have a say on the delegations that's composed of by the office of the permanent secretary. And did you travel with him on this trip? My lord, we traveled with the delegation. In fact, to my recollection, my lord, we went with the official falcon from here with the delegation. The presidential falcon, my lord. And at that point in time, how was your relationship with Mr. Shangala? My Lord, first of all, my relationship with Shangala was cordial. It was not a relationship of friendship because Shangala is not my peer group, in fact. My Lord, the difference between me and Shangala in terms of age is very, very vast. And I have my peer group with whom I was communicating. My lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up the letter from the acting permanent secretary within the Ministry of Fisheries to be marked as exhibit Yell. If I'm not mistaken on the numbering.
We just have a small logistical issue um, concerning the air, con air conditioning, my lord. I believe that it's interfering with the... That's NBC that it's interfering with, not the court's recording. With the recording. But then again, I think the recording is interfering with my f <laughs> flow of air, my lord, and it's quite hot in here. Um, it's NBC, it's not. NBC is recording, my lord. Was it, it was on at the time? Or off? If it's interfering, may I switch it off? I hope it will not be that hot. But when we take brief adjournments, they should switch it on to try and cool the room. They can switch it off, my lord, no problem. Thank you, my lord. You can continue to explain what then happened on this working mission. My lord, when we arrived in Angola, in the Republic of Angola, our embassy to the Republic of Angola took me through a briefing session prior to the signing of, our, of this very instrument, the agreement, my Lord. In Divider 12 of this very file, I was briefed on Angola with special reference to the census of 2014. Twenty fourteen, my lord. I was briefed on the political developments in Angola, my lord. I was briefed on page point four on the economic situation, my Lord, I was also briefed on the on the situation the in conclusion uh, for me to extend a, a, a congratulation to his excellency. Engineer President Jose Eduardo dos Santos for the rapid reconstruction that is taking place in Angola since the end of the war. I was also I was also brief that I should congratulate his counterpart. inauguration of three new modern fishing boat which took place on the 22nd of April 2014 by the Vice President of Angola. Yeah, but for brevity's sake and for the citizens of the court and to move at a bit of a quicker speed in connection with the MOU, what transpired at that or did anything transpire concerning the MOU at that session? The MOU was concluded at that very session by signature, my lord, of myself as then Minister of Fisheries as an agreement as well as my counterpart, the then Minister of Fisheries Honorable Dr. Victoria de Barros Neto. On the 18th of June, 2014. 
And when when did you then return to Namibia? To my recollection, my lord, we immediately returned to Namibia. I believe the 19th of 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 of, of June 2014. And we came through commercial flight back from Angola. And Namibia then, a lot. You earlier mentioned or testified, I think it was yesterday, that there was another, not the working mission, there was a fact-finding mission in 2013. Do you recall? I recall, my lord. To Angola. Correct, my okay. lord. During that visit to Angola, did any of your co-accused accompany you on that visit? During that fact-finding visit, my lord, to my recollection, my Aina Ipinge was part of it. I've also seen Saki in, 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 in that, very dele uh, in that uh, delegation. My PA was also part of the delegation, Madam Chair. And myself was part of that delegation. There were also officials from the Embassy of Namibia in Angola. In that very de in, in, in our in, in our delegation, but they are based in Angola, in, in, in Luanda, Angola. And who determined that delegation of that fact finding mission? Again, it's the office of the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Madam Ulitara Hiverwa. Did you have any input? in the selection of the delegation? Not at all, my lord. I don't decide who should come with me or who should not come with me. Okay. My lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up the briefing notes of 17 to 19 June 2014 between of the Embassy of the Republic of Namibia and Luanda, Angola to be marked as Exhibit M, my lord. Maybe before you proceed, um, the SR, I understood you to say that the 3rd of June 2014, you traveled to Angola with the presidential falcon. Uh, and at the same time, I heard you say that you returned with the commercial flight with Air Namibia. Okay. I just wanted to verify that. My Lord, it is very expensive to travel with a falcon and again, host to keep the people, I mean the Falcon's crew in Angola. And it was just for, for us to be dropped and then for us to come back with commercial flight. So the Falcon returned after dropping us. Thank you. Thank you. To my recollection, my lord. And then yesterday you testified under number 13, that, that was the signed agreement, correct? Correct, my lord. That was the concluded agreement. The lord testimony has already been led on this particular document. Uh, I then beg leave to end it up to be marked as exhibit. Exhibit N, my lord, if there's no objection from the side of my learned friend. Under number 13, divided number 13, my lord, the signed agreement. N, my lord. And my apologies for saying agreement. I'm, I'm going to say memorandum of understanding according to my learned friends. <laughs> now there's obviously an issue whether this is an agreement or an MOU and 
So I want to hand you a document here. And I'll take one to the court. Yes, can you please identify the first page for us, or the document for us? Hello. This is a letter from the office of the Minister of the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. This letter was prepared by the officials of the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. And the, the letter was dated 20th of October. Twenty fourteen. Address to the Honorable Dr. Albert Kawana, Minister of Presidential Affairs and the Attorney General, Private Deck 13345, Venduk, Namibia. Dear Comrade Dr. Kawana, in terms of Section 35, of the Marine Resources Act 2000, Act number 27 of 2000 bracket, the President may conclude fisheries agreement, agreements with SADAC member states to harvest marine resources in Namibian waters. Under section 3.1 of the Assignment of Powers Act 1990, Act Number 4 of 1990, the President had authorized the Minister to sign the agreements between the Republic of Namibia and the Republic of Mozambique. and the Republic of Angola, respectively. With respect to the agreement with the Republic of Mozambique, the Minister of Marine Fisheries and Marine Resources has delegated that the then Deputy Minister sign on his behalf the agreement between the Republic of Namibia and the Republic of Mozambique. The Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources is so doing, in so doing, was empowered to act under Article 37 of the Namibian Constitution. Further, in terms of Section 36, of the Marine Resources Act 2000, bracket Act number 27 of 2000, bracket close, the President must publish by proclamation any such fisheries agreement so concluded. Therefore, the two fisheries agreements having been concluded it is my pleasure to request you to certify the attached draft proclamations for His Excellency the President's signature and publication in the Gazette. Do you have page two of that particular letter as part of your bundle? I believe I do have this letter in my bundle. My Lord, does uh, your Lordship have uh, page two of that letter? Because I see that some of the copies that I've made don't have page two of that particular letter. Is it not contained in the file? It's not contained in the file, my Lord. It's an additional oh, yes. page one. Wow. My Lord, um, I see that the copy that I gave to the to the state, my Lord, and indeed has 
page two, my lord, if I may just quickly make copies of of that one, just yes, for us to finalize this topic. He wants to say something. In the file 22, slide 22 is the complete letter, my lord. Just okay. This one is complete. Yes, the completed one is there. Yes. So. Can my Lord, can I continue reading the last part of the letter on page two? Mr. Biengas? Yes, that is correct, my Lord. You may proceed. Therefore, the two fisheries agreements have been concluded. It is my pleasure to request you to certify the attached draft proclamations for His Excellency the President's signature and publication in the Gazette. Please find attach, please find here to attach copies of the signed agreements for your attention as well. As discussed, please consider this as an urgent matter as the proclamation may be an issue that may be raised in the Lodge litigation and I'm Namsov. Yours, Comrade Lee Bernard Esau, MP, Minister, enclosed draft proclamations, Angola and Mozambique, Fisheries Agreement, Mozambique, Fisheries Agreement, Angola. Signed off, Bernard Esau, Minister, Stamped on the 20th of the 10th, 2014. Office of the Minister. Inquiries on this letter refer to Mrs. A. Erastus. Erastus, I mean, your. your, your your Lordship. This agreement on Gola, what does that mean or what does it refer to? Can you repeat, my Lord? The fisheries agreement. What are you referring to that is enclosed there? The fisheries agreement that should be gazetted. That was the agreement. Memorandum of understanding between the, Rep the Republic, the government of the Republic of Namibia, through the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, and the government of the Republic of Angola, through the Ministry of Fisheries, on cooperation in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture. This very agreement which was signed on the 18th of on the 18th of June, June 2014. 2014 my lord was that agreement then later on gazetted by proclamation my lord this very agreement was gazetted was it gazetted as a fisheries agreement or a memorandum of understanding in terms of the proclamation my Lord, number 22, publication of agreement between the government of the Republic of Namibia and the government of the Republic of Angola on cooperation in fisheries and aquaculture, dot Marine Resources Act. In terms of Article 36, of the Marine Resources Act 2000, bracket Act number 27 of 2000, bracket close, I publish the agreement on cooperation in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture entered into by the government of the Republic of Namibia and the government 
of Republic of Angola on the 18th of June 2014 as set out in the schedule, given under my hand and seal of the Republic of Namibia at Windu, this 26th day of July 2015. Hage Gottfried Gengo, President, by order of the President in Cabinet. Just a few questions on that. Firstly, this government gazette, is it made known to the public? My Lord, this government gazette can be obtained from the internet. It is available on the internet. Number two, I have also, in fact, I have also, in fact, prior to the publication, and made an announcement during my industry address in April 2015 that we have concluded an agreement with Angola, and I want Namibians as well to benefit from this very agreement. And I, my Lord, I have also a copy of my address to the industry on the 15th of April 2015. And if I can, with the permission, my Lord. I will direct you. I will direct you as we, as we are getting there. Just listen to the questions that I'm asking and then we go through this sequence quickly. So you said this agreement, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a public document. It's a public document, my and Lord. This gazette. Correct, my Lord. And this gazette says there's a publication of an agreement between the government of the Republic of Namibia and the government of the Republic of Angola. Correct, my Lord. Okay. It also refers to the publication of agreement between the parties. Correct? Correct, my Lord. So the government of the Republic of Namibia, or at least the president, is referring to it as an agreement. Correct? Correct, my Lord. Can we, members of the public, including yourself, refer to this document, or this MOU, as an agreement, as proclaimed in the government gazette? Can we do that? It is an agreement, my Lord. Okay, thank you. My Lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up, firstly, the letter to Dr. Albert Kawana, dated 20 October 2014, and uh, 22, to be marked as Exhibit O. And then the proclamation of the publication of agreement between the Republic of Namibia and Angola to be marked as Exhibit P. If there is no objection from the side of a learned friend for the state. No, it's under Divider 23, my Lord. Divider 23. 23. My apologies. Okay. Uh, my so Lord, if I may, no for the court's convenience, if that document may then just be returned to yes. us, my Lord, because Thank I see you. it's a duplication. This is a marked exhibit P. Now, Mr. Yesa, it's now safe to say that this agreement that was concluded on the 18th of June 2014. Now, some of the charges that you are facing is that you made a misrepresentation to the government of the Republic of Namibia, which would then include the president. Did you make any such misrepresentations when you concluded that agreement? My Lord, not at all, my Lord. Not at all. I have never made any misrepresentation to the president, neither to the government of the Republic of Namibia on this very agreement. 
which was a technical agreement, concluded and for my signature. And you also testified that you acted on the authority of the then President Dr. Pohamba. If you put you Pohamba. Correct, my lord. Mm -hmm. I acted on the authority of the President of the Republic of Namibia, the former President Ifike Punye Pohamba, His Excellency. And you make any misrepresentations? Not at all, my Lord. To the former President? Not at all, my Lord. I have never made such misrepresentations to the appointing authority. And to the current president who gazetted it by proclamation? Not at all, my lord. Not at all. Do you know, as part of your disclosure, whether there were any statements provided by either of his excellencies that there was misrepresentations made to them? I have not seen any, any statement to that effect, my lord, that I have made misrepresentations to his excellencies, both the former as well as the current in terms of this very agreement. Okay. Now let us go back, and back to the sequence of events. So you then signed the agreement on the 18th of June 2014. What then transpired in terms of the implementation of this agreement between the two, state, between the two states? My Lord, I signed the agreement on the 18th of June, 2014. This very agreement was returned. It was brought by the administrators, the officials of the Ministry of Fisheries. This agreement was internalized, internalized in the records of the Ministry of Fisheries. In terms of the Marine Resources Act, that is section of the Act, section 43.1. If we can go to the Act, my Lord, don't want us to go there, but this is where the ordinary rights, as well as rights in terms of agreements, fisheries agreements. And who's responsible for the administration of these fisheries agreements? It is the Office of the Permanent Secretary and the Administration Management of the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. Take you to in the main bundle under number 14. This is a document that was disclosed to us by the state. Do you have any knowledge of this document? I do have a knowledge of this very document, my lord. How I do. come to learn of the document? My lord, this document was addressed to me as a minister then of Fisheries and Marine Resources of the Republic of Namibia, Honorable Bernard Esso, the Minister of Fisheries of the Republic of Angola, Madam Victoria de Barros Neto, on the 18th of December 2013. Subject, dear honorable ministers, business enterprise cooperation between Namibia and Angola 
in the fishing sector. this particular document sent to you or was it sent to you this document was sent via the office of my office in uh, as, as the then minister of fisheries and I was provided with this document by my office and I made a copy of this document of this particular document? My Lord, when I received this document, <coughs> I referred this document to the administration of the ministry. I referred it to the office of the permanent secretary then because during this time, 18th of December 2013, I was with my late brother, who was terminally ill with pancreatic cancer. And he was in the hospital paramount, admitted, and I was most of the time there with him. So did you pay any mind to this particular letter or apply your mind to the letter or the contents thereof at that time? There was no agreement between okay. Namibia and Angola during that time of the 18th, my Lord, of December 2013. There were still discussions within the ministry, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs then, on this very agreement. So there was no agreement for this letter's content to really be realized. I have sent it there because I know all applications for rights, all applications for quotas, all applications for licenses are of administrative nature and it's of technical nature and it has to be handled by the technocrats of the ministry. And that is why you send it to the PS? Correct, my lord. Lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up the business enterprise cooperation between the Mobian and Gaula letter to be marked as exhibit Q, P or Q, my lord. I'm generally not one that would ask for breaks or brief breaks, but I really do require one, my lord. Yeah, the, heat the heat is intense, my lord. I can, the, the sweat is. Only I even took off my blazer, but that doesn't seem to, to be working, my lord. Just a five minute breather. Just for the aircon to be switched on a bit and to cool the room at least a bit, my lord. Close the doors when they switch well on as the aircon. Um, and get it to the court, my lord. John, briefly. Yes, my lord. Um, just to report back on the logistical issues, the issue of the NBC mics have been resolved and we are allowed then to keep the air conditioning on, my lord. So we can now proceed uninterrupted. <coughs> Mr. Yesau. Oh, apologies, my lord.
Thank you, my lord. Mr. Yes, I'm still on Exhibit Q and uh, number 14. Are you there? Thanks, my lord. Yes, yes. I'm there, my lord. You said uh, you earlier testified that you didn't really pay mind to this letter and that you sent it through to the PS, correct? Correct, my lord. But now, having considered this particular letter, and as being this document being disclosed to you, do you have any comments on this particular document? My Lord, in terms of letters to the office of the minister or to the offices of the administration, to my knowledge, my Lord, I have never experienced a letter or saw a letter addressed to on one page to two ministers of two different states pertaining to issues such as agreements. I have never seen one coming from Mozambique even. I've never shown that in terms of Marazul or Bairama, as I have testified yesterday, yesterday, my Lord. I've never seen that. I have, as I've stated as well, since I was really touched by my brother, I was not paying any attention to these letters, and I've referred these letters to the PS, since the PSs are the people who are attending to let to matters of administrative nature. My Lord. Did you give any permission to Mr. Shangala, should he have drafted this letter, to draft or sign this letter on your behalf or your ministry's behalf? I cannot delegate any duties or responsibilities to somebody outside the ministry. I cannot delegate that, my Lord. I had the Deputy Minister in the name of the late Kilus Nguvauva that time. And if my memory serves me well, and if I had to delegate any responsibilities as I did for the signature of the Mozambique Protocol Agreement or MOU, I had to delegate it to somebody who was assigned to me as my deputy and nobody else other than that, or my permanent secretary other than that. I cannot delegate, and the minister cannot delegate that, my lord. So the answer is no? No, not at all, my lord. Can move on. Before we move on, still on that letter, the emblems, is that the normal process of how a government or Namibian official correspondence would be? I've never seen such in my lifetime as a deputy minister, as a minister. As a member of parliament, I've never seen two parliaments with one letter, I mean two emblems. My Lord. Let's move on, Mr. Yesau. Let's go to number 15. Divider 15. This is, I know I'm not allowed to testify, but <laughs> for the court's convenience, it's one of the documents that was disclosed to us, and you had not a party to this document. It's common cause. But can you please just identify this document for us, and if you have any comments on it, please make such comments. 
My Lord, document under Divider 1515 from Saki Edward Shangala, dated the 28th of July, a Sunday, 2013, to a Mr. Johannes Stefansson from SJ Fishing, subject Opportunity Angola. Attachments Opportunity Angola, Docs Opportunity Angola, Dia, Angola Diagram, XLS, XLSX. Begin forward, forwarded message from Saki Shangala, Opportunity Angola, dated the 28th of July 2013, to Stephenson to Johannes Stephenson. Dear Johannes, you may notice that I am corresponding to you directly without consulting James and Fiti as yet. Until further notice, that is until I inform you, please do not share this document. I am only sharing it with the minister as he still needs to discuss with his counterpart. Please make input into it so that he can understand the deal and I can't see this other word will extract from it something I need to send my counterpart by Monday. Tentative meetings on Saturday next. Therefore, please look into it and we can converse or you can simply adjust it so I can print and give the minister tomorrow at breakfast. And by the time I get into the airport, we know how to go and you can inform. Bracket, I will copy them, James and Fiti, on the way forward. I trust you understanding Saki. Okay. Let's start off with the bottom part of the email, the first part. The descend on the 28th of July 2013. You see, it indicates that there was a document attached. Opportunity Angola, can you please turn the page? Correct. Do you see that particular document? I see this particular document. Do you have any knowledge of this document? Have you ever received it? I've never received such a document unless, unless it was maybe dropped at the offices of the, my offices. But have you read it? No, my lord. I cannot okay. recall reading this document, my lord. Let's go back to the email. It's indicated here that I'm only sharing it with the minister. Then I will print it and I will give it to the minister tomorrow at breakfast. And by, by that time I will I get into the airport. Did you have any meeting with Mr. Shangala on the 29th or the 28th? My lord. I never had a meeting with Master Shangala, Edward, Saki, Sakeus. I never had a meeting on the 29th at, with him at breakfast. I never had a breakfast meeting with him. Did you have breakfast with him on the 29th or the 28th? Not at all, my lord. Were you given any document by Mr. Shangala on any of those two days? Not at all, my lord. Okay. Right. Were you given any document, any documents mm -hmm. on that day, the 28th or the 29th? Yes.
And were you aware of this opportunity in Angola that were being discussed? Not at all, my lord. Was it discussed with you by any of your co-accused? Not at all, my lord. And where were you on the 28th of July, 2013? My Lord, in terms of my passport, traveling, expired passport, I was, I left Angola on the 28th for Namibia, for home. And I was not there as alleged in this very email on the 29th for, for a brief. Because on the 28th of July, 2013, I, was, I left Angola. And I was home on the 28th of July. 2013, as per my passport as well. Can we go there? After that document, there would be, after the Angola Opportunity document, can you identify the document for us? That is the uh, fourth page. Under my lord, under fifteen one five. Yes. Please identify the document for us. My lord, it's a copy of my passport page. There, it's it has a stamp. When I depart Luanda. First arrival, 24th of July, Ju July 2013, that the arrival time. That was for the fact-finding mission. And I depart Angola on the 28th of July 2013. I left the airport of Angola on the 28th. My Lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up firstly the email with the attachment, Opportunity Angola, to be marked as exhibit. R, my Lord. R? We can make it R1. R2, Opportunity Angola, page 1. Repeat that. R1 would, R1 be would be the email, my lord. R2 would be the Opportunity Angola. Okay. R3 would be the second page of Opportunity Angola. And then the printout of the passport. That would be R4. R4. Which one is R3? R3 would be the second page of Opportunity Angola. Is it not one document? Okay, it's one document, my lord. I was just thinking for sequence sake. But we can then just mark it Opportunity Angola R2. Mm -hmm. And then we can make R3. The passport. The passport. Yes. Uh, R3, which they want to be, document they want to be labeled as R3. Yeah. Uh, if they can have a case before we accept it yes. to see the original, which shows that because it doesn't show that it yes. is the passport of okay. of the applicant. Well, not yet. Mr. Yourself, your original passport, where is it? This original passport is available with my wife at home. You can get that. I would hope she's got it maybe here, if possible, my lord. She's in the chambers here. So. All right, let's provisionally accept it subject to 
Uh, that objection. Yes, please. Yes. My Lord, we will also be asking for regional documents as we move along and when the state presents their case. But it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. But we can proceed, my Lord. This agreement was concluded. How was it then implemented? This fisheries agreement between the two countries. My Lord, when this agreement was concluded by both of us on the 18th, the Minister of Angola and myself through signature, as I've stated before, this agreement was brought, was brought home and internalized that means it was factored into the it was factored into the register of the ministry on rights quotas licenses that includes both ordinary rights as well as rights in terms of fisheries agreements so what happened my lord is that the office of the permanent secretary had to brief me what next to happen. And a letter, my lord, was prepared for me, thanking by the PS office, thanking my counterpart for the visit and the conclusion of the agreement. Close the copy of that particular letter. Under one eight, my lord. I'm sorry, file divider one eight. Yes, my lord. Okay. Is this the letter that you are referring to that was prepared by the permanent secretary? Correct, my lord. Okay. The then permanent secretary, the late Madame Uritara Rivero. My Lord, a letter prepared on my letterhead, then Minister of Fisheries, Honorable Dr. Victoria de Barros Neto, the Minister of Fisheries, Ministry of Fisheries, Luanda, Republic of Angola, dated the 24th of June 2014. Dear Honorable Minister, re-implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in the Areas of Fisheries and Aquaculture between the Republic of Angola and the Republic of Namibia. Once again, I wish to thank you, Honorable Colleague, for the invitation, the hospitality accorded to me and my delegation during my just-ended visit and look forward to a productive collaboration between our two system ministries and countries. As discussed, I would like to implement the agreement straightforward and as provided under the Marine 
Resources Act 2000, Bracket Act number 27 of 2000, Bracket Close, the Government of the Republic of Namibia will cause that the agreement is published in the Government Gazette and thereafter it is required of us as the fisheries authorities under section 35.2 thereof to nominate the fishing companies that will apply for, the, for a quota to harvest marine resources in Namibian waters. Section 35 provides as follows. The president may enter into fisheries agreement with a member country of the Southern African Development Community providing for such country to harvest marine resources in Namibian waters. A person nominated by the responsible authorities of a party to a fisheries agreement shall be entitled to apply for a quota under section 39 and a license under section 40 as though he or she with the holder of a right. Page 2. Every quota allocated and every license issued to a person entitled under subsection 2 shall be subject to such quantitative or other limits which a, min a fisheries agreement may specify as well as to all other provisions of this Act. I therefore, my Lord, seek your concurrence, Honorable Minister, that pursuant to Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding and Cooperation in Fisheries and Aquaculture, we nominate the Angolan fishing entity Namgoma Pesh Caps SA and or its nominee in conjunction with the Namibian fishing entity Namgoma Pesca Namibia, PTY Limited, to harvest marine resources in the maritime jurisdiction of the Republic of Namibia. Upon receipt of your confirmation, I will inform the entities in writing of your designation under Section 35.2 of the Marine Resources Act, read together with Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in Fisheries and Aquaculture. I look forward for your confirmation in this regard and wish to express to you, Honorable Minister, the assurances of my comradely regards to you, yours sincerely, Bernard Esso, MP, Minister, stamped 25-6-2014. Stamped after, after the prepared letter of the 24th of June, 2014. So you said on the 24th, the letter was prepared by the PS, and then you signed and stamped it on the 25th. Yes, I received the letter in my office, my lord from the office of the PS for me to stamp and all official correspondence pertaining to this letter must be addressed to the permanent secretary. And in this particular letter, it also nominates then Nemgumar Peshka SA and Nemgumar Peshka Namibia PTY LTD. You saw that? Correct, my lord. No. Correct. Who decided on the nomination of these entities? As I stated, my lord, in the beginning, under that very letter with two emblems, which came to my office, which I've referred to the office of the PS, that letter is also making reference to Namibia, Namgoma Peshka. It makes reference to that entity. And based, I assume, based on the evaluations, of the office of the PS and the administration, they have factored in into this letter which I've sent to my counterpart, that very name.
And who would be required to do due diligence on the existence and legality of these entities within your office? Would that be you or the PS? My Lord, I don't have the capacity as a minister. I was a political appointee. I don't have the capacity to do any due diligence or verifications on any entity that is applying for a right or who is nominated because that very entity must be verified by the administration and the office of the PS, my lord. So when it comes to you, should the verification process have been finalized? I assume, my lord, because he or he is my principal advisor, my lord, and I cannot, I have never questioned I've never ever questioned or referred back, refer matters back to the offices of the peers or the offices of the administration. And the administration, who's responsible for the administration? You, you previously it's testified the, the peers. It's the permanent secretary who's responsible for the administration. She's, he or she is the accounting officer of, the minister, of any ministry. And you testify that includes applications being made to the permanent secretary, official correspondence being drafted by the permanent secretary, and all official correspondence being received by the permanent secretary. Is that correct? Correct, my lord. In terms of the delegated duties and responsibilities, as I have mentioned, my lord, yesterday, in terms of that regulations for the exploitation of marine resources, it was a delegated responsibility to the office of the permanent secretary prior even to me being appointed or deployed to the ministry. Okay. And it was also the permanent secretary who decided on the designation of the official team that would travel in respect of this signing and establishment of this MOU. Correct, my lord. Okay. And at that point in time, did you know who Nemgomar Peshka SA belonged to, who the shareholders or the directors were? I never knew who were the shareholders, who were the directors, who were part of the management of Peshka, Namgoma Peshka. And Nemgumar Peshka, Namibia PTY LTD, did you know? I never knew before even. I'm talking about now the shareholders no. and the directors. Correct. Correct, my lord. I never knew. Mm -hmm. You testified that you acted on the advice of the peers and assumed that verification would have been done by the peers. Correct, my lord. Okay. A lot if there's no objection. I beg leave to hand up the implementation letter or the letter dated 24 June 2014 from the office of the minister to Honorable Victoria de Barros Neto to be marked as exhibit. Yes, my lord. I believe we just finished the art. Mm. Exhibit S. Exhibit S. Mm. <coughs> now, if you turn the page. And when I say turn the page, we are still under divider number 18. Are you there? Correct, my lord. Divider number 18, the third page there.
Are you there? Correct, my lord. Can you please there, identify the document for us? Republic of Namibia, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, dated 27 June 2014, the director, Paul Print Investment, slash Namgoma Peshka, Ru Americo Julio de Carvajo, N138 Bayro Azul, Luanda, Angola. Dear sir, nomination for a horse mackerel quota allocation. I have the pleasure to inform you that the minister has nominated your joint venture PO, PO Print Investment Pty Limited slash Namgoma Peshka to apply for a horse mackerel quota in accordance with the Marine Resources Act number 27 of 2000, Article 35, Para 2, Bracket 2. The validity of this nomination will be guided by the MOU on cooperation in the fisheries sector between the Republic of Namibia and Angola. Your acceptance of this letter should reach us not later than the 2nd of July 2014 Yours faithfully, Ulitara Hivera, Permanent Secretary, signed on the 27th of, of June, 2014. I submit, my Lord. Now, you must clarify this one point first. Mm -hmm. We see that this letter is under the signature of the Permanent Secretary. Were you aware of this letter? I was not aware of this letter because I was not copied on on this letter even. Because this letter talks about a poor print investment. And the previous letter that you said that was prepared by the PS referred to Nemgomar Peshka SA and Nemgomar Peshka Namibia PTY LTD. You see that? Correct, my lord. Okay. Correct, my lord. And this poor print investment that the permanent secretary wrote to, do you know whether the permanent secretary did any due diligence or verification in respect of who poor print is? I assume, comrade, my lord, that she must have done a, a, a due diligence on this very entity for her to have informed me about this very poor print in, in this very letter which he has, they have prepared for my signature to my counterpart. So you testified that the Office of the Permanent Secretary would be responsible for administration, would be responsible for due diligence, would be responsible for verification. Was it then incumbent upon the Permanent Secretary to ensure and verify these entities to whom she's writing this correspondence to? Correct. It was, my Lord, incumbent to the PS, Permanent Secretary, and the administration of the Ministry for verification of this very due diligence for this very entities. And is this the same Permanent Secretary that wrote this letter? they decided on the designated parties that should attend to these meetings. Correct, my lord. Okay. And this is this also the very same permanent secretary to whom you sent the other letter that you received that you said that you've never seen before and Correct, paid no my mind lord. to? Yes. Correct, my lord. Okay. Thank and you. it was prior, prior to the date of 27th June, 2014. Now, from your experience, you've been a minister for quite some time. Um, approximately how long? I Yesterday was a bit of a tough day for me, and I didn't start with leading you. How long have you been a, a, a minister? My Lord, I've been one of the longest-serving ministers of fisheries in marine, and marine resources in our Republic of Namibia. 
as a full cabinet state minister, not as a deputy, but as a state minister in the history of Namibia. Very long, close to 10 years, my lord. Can a minister tell or instruct the permanent secretary what to put in a letter and just sign it without verification? My lord. As I have stated before, a PS is the principal advisor to a minister. There is no way she has been, even the PS there, has been one of the founding permanent secretaries of our Republic of Namibia. From independence back 1990, she was already in the administration of our government as a permanent secretary, not as a di directly. And I could not really, honestly speaking, personally, I could not dictate or direct administratively the permanent secretary. And I was in fact informed when she was deployed there by the then Prime Minister, Na Sangula, that we are giving you this permanent secretary to help you in the administration. My Lord, this is what I know and I cannot, I could not. And it was not the chemistry of me as Esso Bernard. My Lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up the letter from the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Fisheries. Uh, we can make it exhibit S2, my lord, and then we can make the first one S1. Yes. S2. We exhibit S2. You also earlier testified that well, that should have been yesterday, if my memory serves me correct. That there is a vigorous process that the ministry goes through in order to determine the TAC, the total allowable catch per annum. And correct, must, my lord. Okay. And you said that, uh, or you can briefly explain to us again. Just brief. My lord. We, the determination of the total allowable catch is based on surveys that is carried out by our marine scientists. And in some instances, these very surveys are carried out in conjunction with the private sector in the fishing sector. Now, my Lord, when the surveys are carried out to determine the TACs, this very results of the surveys is discussed by the Marine Resources Advisory Council. And this very council, my Lord, consists out of the scientists, marine scientists. It consists out of marine economists. It consists out of the fishing industry. It consists also out of the trade unions. I have included the trade unions there. As appointed. I took it to cabinet. That body interrogates the reports coming from the scientists, the reports, the socio-economic reports coming from the marine economists. 
in the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources for each and every fish fisheries for hake, for horse mackerel, for monk, for crab, you name them for sar sardinella, sardines, pelchets, they are the ones who are preparing the TACs, the total allowable catch for a season per fisheries. And they present or make recommendations to the minister, which the minister takes to the cabinet, my lord, for further discussions and for concurrence for the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to announce to the public, which is still the practice today. What I have observed, my Lord, I submit, my Lord, I, let me stop here. Sir. You can summarize over now and then, but it's okay. It's, it's your opportunity in your day in court. Now, Mr. Yeso, let's go to, thank you for the explanation, let's go to divider number 19. And then you please identify the document for us. Republic of Namibia, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, internal memorandum to the Honorable Bernard Esau, Minister, copied CC to Honorable Chief Samuel Ankama, Deputy Minister, the late, from Mrs. Uritara Hiverwa, Permanent Secretary, date the 1st of July, 2014. Subject, additional horse mackerel quota allocations for the 2014 fishing season. Introduction, the proposed total allowable catch, TAC, for the 2014 fishing season has been set at 350 metric tons. This is the same as the 2013 fishing season. One one initial allocation for 2014. During 2014 initial allocation 220,000 metric tons was allocated to the midwater fishery on pro rata. An allocation of 16,000 metric tons was made to the non-right holders, which include Namibian Fish Consumption Promotion Trust, NFCPT, and Gentef Group for the horse mackerel land-based processing. Proposed allocations, 2 .2, 2.1 allocation of 92,104 metric tons of horse mackerel is to be allocated as follows. 50,104 metric tons to be allocated to all right holders. 42,000 metric tons to be allocated to non-right holders. Page two. So just Next to stop page. there, you know, let me ask you questions in between. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Otherwise, we might doze off like some of our colleagues. <clears throat> this particular internal memorandum was prepared by the permanent secretary, correct? Correct, my lord. And that is the same permanent secretary that we refer to? Correct, my lord. Okay. And here there's a proposal that 50,104 metric tons be allocated to right holders. Correct, my lord. 
and 42,000 to non right holders. Correct, my lord. And in order for the permanent secretary to prepare such a internal memorandum requesting for approval or proposing for additional horse mackerel quotas to be allocated, uh, does she go through a process or he go through a process before making such a mission? My Lord, <clears throat> when such submission is made to my understanding, to my experience in the ministry, is that the PS is going through a process administratively. She goes through a process with the staff of the Ministry of Fisheries, which is the Directorate of Policy, Planning and Economics. Okay. After, and that is after the concurrence of cabinet on the TAC. Because there's a cabinet submission as well, which is normally, in fact, prepared by the PS after the MRAC, the Marine Resources Advisory Council meeting, for signature by the minister and to go and take it to cabinet. And then, if you turn to page two, mm -hmm. I will take you briefly through and ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Allocation of 42,000 metric tons to non right holders to be allocated as follows. 10,000 metric ton to National Fishing Corporation, Fish Corps, Namibia-Mozambique Agreement, 8,000 metric tons to OASIS, 1,500 metric tons to Mara and 1,500 metric tons to Beira Mao. Correct, my lord. And 8,000 to Small Pelagic Association and 7,000 metric tons to Namibia Angola bilateral agreement. Correct, my lord. Do you know what Namibia Angola bilateral agreement uh, the PS was referring to? That must get 7,000 metric tons? It was, my lord. She was referring to the concluded agreement, which was signed on the 18th of June, 2014, my lord. So it was the permanent secretary who proposed to you as the minister how much should be given to them? Correct, my lord. Okay. And also the 10,000 metric tons to the National Fishing Corporation? Correct, my lord. It would appear that the 2,000 metric tons also went to Namibia Fishing Consumption and Promotion Trust. Correct, my lord. Okay. Who, now, who are those companies that are listed there as non right holders? Can you please explain how these non right holders are allocated quotas? Because you look at, at, the, at the top, it says allocation of 42,000 metric tons to non right holders. Mm -hmm. Those non right holders, my lord, was determined by the administration and proposed or recommended to the minister. So these non right holders were all coming from the administration of Ministry of Fisheries and the Office of the Permanent Secretary who sent this memo to the minister. So, Fish Corps did not have rights. They were non right holders. According to this internal memo. Internal memo. We will get to the Fish Corps part okay. later. Mm -hmm. Namibia, Mozambique, there's an agreement in place, a fisheries agreement in place. Correct, my lord. Okay. Namibia and Angola bilateral agreement, it, it refers to an agreement. Sorry, you wanted to say something? My Lord, uh, uh, on Namibia Angola, there was an agreement already prior to my time. When before 2010, before I was assigned or deployed to the ministry or appointed to the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. And OASIS, OASIS was the only company first 
and that agreement was not even gazetted. And small political association It was determined by the by the administration, my lord. Was there an agreement with them in place? Were they entitled to receive quotas at that there, point in time? My lord, there was no agreement. There was no agreement. These are proposals coming from the administration and from the office of the peers. There was no agreement, my lord, to be frank. If you can recall at that point in time, in terms of the Marine Resources Act, in terms of the act, your relevant act, were they entitled to receive quotas? 2014, my lord, there was a court case between NAMSOF as an applicant against the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources and the others, that's the government of the Republic of Namibia, as well as FISCO as respondents. And my Lord, at that, the judgment of that very litigation was no quotas should be allocated to non right holders. That was the judgment of that very very case, which was his, the Honorable Justice Uitele, gave a judgment on the, uh, an order in the month of December, and the judgment was given in January, early January 2015. And I was represented, and the government of the Republic of Namibia was represented by Master Sak, Dr. Saki Akwenda, he was representing, who is now also fighting me in the poker. Can you get the, can you get the, sorry. Uh, Mr. Yesaw? Sorry, my lord. This is common cause, and I hope that um, there will be no objection to this. Small pelagic, Chendev, Namibia Fish Consumption, Trust, Large Pelagic and Hague Longling Association, those non right holders and Fish Corps, they were part of the respondents in that case of NAMSOF. Are you aware thereof? I am aware of that, my lord, in the, in the court case, I think C241. And in terms of the charges that you are facing, were you charged for the awarding of quotas to non right holders such as small pelagic association? In terms of the charges, my lord, that I'm facing today is that I have misused, I have contravened, in fact. Mr. Yesel, sorry for interrupting you, sir. Just listen to the question. Are you charged for awarding or allocating quotas to small pelagic association and Namibia Fish Consumption and Promotion Trust. I am charged for awarding. And Gendef. I am charged having awarded quotas to na National for Fish Corps. Yes. I am charged for awarding or allocating quotas for the bilateral agreement Namibia-Angola with special reference to Nam Goma. Yes. <coughs> the rest, presently, I am not charged for. The rest? The they, rest were I'm not also, they were also non-right holders, and you said the judgment of names upset. It was illegal. Mm. You were not charged for those. Yeah, in terms of the 2014, 2014, the ruling. Yes. The ruling was not, with the exception, sorry, the ruling was that I should, we should not allocate quotas to non-right holders. With the exception 
of the Namibia Fish Consumption Promotion Trust. Okay. But the rest were. And these were the companies or the entities that were recommended to you by the Permanent Secretary? Correct, my Lord. Okay. Let's go on. At number three, points of consideration. I am together, my Lord. The second last bullet, under point number three. Correct, my Lord. It reads, the allocation of 10,000 metric tons to fish core is given as a bailout quota and it is once off. Correct, my Lord. Do you know what that bailout was for? For it was for your consideration from the PS. As briefed, my Lord, by the PS and the administration for management of the Ministry of Fisheries, Fishco was technically insolvent. And the PS, by then, the late, was also serving on the board of Fishco by virtue of her position as a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Fisheries. My Lord, the PS brought under my attention the annual financial, the audited annual financial statements of Fishco ending April. 2014, if my memory serves me well, whereby, my Lord, a qualified audit opinion was provided by Steer and Fender. And she told me that she's afraid, she's afraid that the board of directors have a fiduciary responsibility and they might stand to be charged for reckless trading because, because the current liabilities exceeded the current assets. And based on that, therefore, the 10,000 metric tons of horse mackerel is for consideration and the recommendation, recommend, recommendation from the PS offices and the administration. Because this PS was also on the board of Fish Corps. Correct, my Lord. Okay. And then we move on to the recommendations. The recommendation says, it is recommended that the Honorable Minister approve the quota allocations of 92,104 metric tons as per the table attached. Correct, my lord. And then there at the bottom it provides now for the minister to either say approved or not approved. And what did you do? I accept, my lord. Okay. Now there's also a note there next to it. Can you please take correct, it through the correct, handwritten my lord. note? When I was presented with this very internal memo with the recommendations to accept the allocations of quotas to right as well as non-right holders. I made a note because I was told that why are you not making notes? Why are you not making observations? Why are you quiet? I was saying, no, let me make a note for you then. And I pointed out point of consideration. The Namibia-Angola bilateral agreement is allocated on a reciprocal basis. I can't see this one very well. To, to Namgom Namgoma, Namgoma, Peshka, Peshka Namibia. Namibia, and Namgoma, Peshka, Pty, Angola. PT, LDT, LDT, sorry, my lord, LDT, Angola. That's the note I made, that why are we only to give but not receive as a country on a bilateral basis? And that, that was, was my observation. 
by observation. Your point of consideration yes, is indicated consideration, there. my Lord. And the names of these two companies, are they the same that you are referring to here as the letter that was prepared by the PS earlier on the 24th of June, 2014? Namgoma Namibia PTY Limited and Namgoma Peshka Limitata or Angola are two different companies. But to my understanding was that Namgoma Peshka was the owner in terms of shares of Namgoma Peshka Namibia. Mm -hmm. And when such an internal memorandum comes to you, should there have been a due diligence or verification process conducted by the person who prepared this internal memo for you? Correct, my Lord. They suppose that was the task of them because I never had the capacity in, my, in the office of the minister as a political office bearer. It, I was relying 110% from the office of the peers and the administration of the ministry. My Lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to hand up the internal memorandum from the permanent secretary to the minister, dated 1 July 2014, to be marked as Exhibit T. T for time, my Lord. I see it's now 30 minutes past 12. <coughs> My learned friend indicated that he has a doctor's appointment uh, 20 minutes to. What is the time? 12.30, um, okay. my lord. Okay. My learned friend indicated mm -hmm. his appointment 20 minutes to. I think he still needs a bit of time to travel. So I believe this would be an opportune moment to break for, for lunch, my lord. Um, the document is under divider 19. <coughs> it's marked Exhibit T. Since we are adjoining much earlier, can we resume at 1,400 hours? Perfect, my lord. 1,400 hours is perfect. Is that fine? It's in order, my lord. Okay, thank you. We'll adjourn till 1,400 hours. Well, Lord, before I proceed with the examination, the chief, I just wish to inform the court that I have since provided, provided the copy of the original passport to my landlord's friends in order for them to, 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 to verify the authenticity of the particular paper that I provided to court, as it, as it pleases. Mr. Yassau. Yes, One aspect, aspect that we need, need to clarify before we proceed with your examination in chief. You 
uh, you earlier testified that you are, in essence, in essence really a political appointee and, and that the permanent, permanent secretary, so to say, would be the accounting officer within the ministry. Can you please, can you please explain, explain and clarify that to court? My Lord, as I, as I have testified before lunch, for lunch the permanent secretary is the, the accounting officer of, of a, ministry. a ministry. My Lord, the, the accounting, accounting officers are appointed by the office, by the office of, of the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister. and the resort under, under that, that very, very, very outfit. outfit. They and they are assigned or deployed. To, to the ministries, ministries. And, there and there was no exception to the, to the rule when it, when it comes to the accounting officer of the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. And my, and my permanent, permanent secretary, then and then in the late, Madame, Madame Dara, Dara Hiverwa was, was assigned to the, to the ministry, and, and the former one went, went that is, that is Mr. Frank, Frank Shihama, Went, went to the office, office of the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister for, for other, duties. other duties. And he was, he was in fact, the Permanent Secretary responsible for state-owned state state enterprises and governance council, council at that time. Thank you. And these, and these appointments you said are done by the Prime Minister, Minister. does it also fall under the Public Service, Public Service Act? Act? Correct, correct, my Lord. It falls under the Public Service Act. My, my understanding, understanding as a former minister. minister. We can't, we can't we still get the permanent, permanent secretaries of a position, position which are renamed. Yeah, yeah the, the, the title, title is now, is now called executive director. director. Okay. Because, because my lord, there was, there was a, perception a perception in the minds, in the minds of, our of our public, public that, that permanent, permanent secretaries and having job, job security and permanent permanently employed. And that and my experience as well as a former minister that permanent secretaries are accounting officers. They are responsible for the administration, the management of a minister ministry. And they are responsible and accountable as well to the minister, to my understanding, or to the president, or to the prime minister. And they are also accountable to the permanent secretary in the office of the prime minister. Like for argument's sake now, they are accountable to George Simata. Okay. My Lord, my learned friends have had an opportunity to peruse the original diplomatic passport of Mr. Yesau. Uh, we provisionally submitted, I think it's exhibit R3, my Lord, a copy of the passport depicting that of the applicant. Uh, if my learned friend for the state may confirm whether it can now be finally be made a, an exhibit or do they still persist in their objection? As it please the court. As it please the court. As the court pleases. I had already marked it as an exhibit. Yes, it's already marked, my lord. Yes. But we, we initially said tentatively. Yes. Mr. Yeso, so after you received this internal memorandum and you signed it off, do you know what process was followed in respect of the implementation of the allocation of the additional quotas for us, Mackerel? 
My Lord, when I normally resigned, I mean receive this internal memos, I received it through through my personal assistant that was now at that time Shea Shaidomweni. This memo is normally returned again through her to the office of the permanent secretary. And from this very memorandum, the permanent secretary writes letters to all right holders and non-right holders, informing them about the allocations of quotas for a specific fishing season. So letters are coming out from the, from, from the Office of the Permanent Secretary to all right and non-right holders. Okay. So just to recap, applications can be received or are received through the Office of the Permanent Secretary. Mm. Evaluation process goes through. Internal memo is then prepared by the Permanent Secretary for your approval or disapproval. And if you approve, it goes back to the PS, and then the PS will then allocate according to your approval. Correct, my Lord. Okay. Applications are launched with the PS on quotas as per the regulations exploiting marine resources, regulation 241 of 2001. These applications are evaluated, and these applications, my Lord, culminate into this very memo, internal memo, with an annexure of a schedule, how much quota is appropriated or given for the right holders, how many quotas in terms of metric tons is given to non-right holders or right, hold, right holders in terms of fisheries agreements. And this very memo, when it is returned to the office of the prime, I mean, of the permanent secretary, this very memo results in the issuance of let letters to all okay. who are allocated. Mr. Yeso, uh, for the sake of brevity, next time when I when I just recap and I, you can just confirm yes or no because you've already testified to that. I Thank just want you, to know Lord. that we've recorded your mm. testimony accurately. Mm. And you can just say yes, unless there's something you want to tweak. No? Thank you, my Lord. Yes. No. So you say the PS has these powers in terms of the regulations. But in terms of the act that you took us previously, it would indicate that the powers best with the Minister. Mm. Correct, my Lord. The Act says the powers is vested with the Minister. But in the same vein, the Act says that in terms of Section 61.1, that functions or responsibilities are delegated to the Permanent Secretary in terms of rights in terms of quotas and in terms of licenses. And that, in fact, was how I was inducted. That is, in fact, how I was briefed and introduced to the Marine Resources Act and to the regulations of the Act pertaining to rights, quotas, and licenses. Thank you. You also previously referred to a delegation, a law that allows for the delegation of authority. Can you please just clarify correct, that? Correct, my Lord. In terms of the Assignment of Powers Act, 
Where can we find that one? It should be in the file as well, my lord. Let me assist under uh, number 17, divider 17. My Lord, in terms of the Assignment of Powers Act, it's Act Number Four of 1990, mm -hmm. Section Three, Assignment of Powers, it's on page two, my Lord. Assignment of powers, duties, or functions by the President. Three one. The President may assign the administration of any provision in any law which entrust the President to the President any powers, duties, functions to the Prime Minister or any Minister. Or, it's A, and B, to a Minister any powers duties and functions to the Prime Minister or any other Minister. And I'm referring to 3.1a, my Lord. Mm -hmm. And why are you referring to the Assignment of Powers Act? How does it apply in your case? My Lord, in terms of the signing, the conclusion of the agreement, the agreement between Namibia and Angola on fisheries and Aquaculture. Okay. My Lord, if there's no objection, we beg leave that the Assignment of Powers Act be entered into evidence and to be marked as exhibit. You. What was the last number? Oh, this, is, this is law, this is a statute, why should it be an exhibit? The court can just take judicial notice that there's, there's such a law. Okay. My Lord, it was purely for the court's convenience, but I agree with my learned friend 100%. We can take judicial notice of it. It's not okay. necessary to, to mark legislation as part of exhibits. We can just refer to it. Yeah, that's Section that's 3, fine. as it pleases the court, and I'm indebted to my learned friend. Uh, Mr. Marandetia for his infinite wisdom. <clears throat> now let us go to divider number 20. Are you there, Mr. Yassam? Correct, my lord. Can you please identify the document for us? Document 20, in divider, in divider 20. Mm -hmm. On top of the document, my lord, there is Embassy Namibia, Luanda. It's small written there. Republica de Angola, Ministerio das Pescas, Cabinete da Ministra. Honorable Mr. Bernard SOMP, the Minister, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Windhoek, Republic of Namibia. Dear Honorable Minister SO, confirmation of designation in terms of Section 35.2 of the Marine Resources Act. 2000 of the Republic of Namibia read together with Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding of the Fisheries on Fisheries and Aquaculture. I wish to present my comp compliments to you as well as to thank you for having gra graciously accepted my invitation to visit Rwanda, Angola during the period 17 to 19 June 2014 so that we may conclude the Memorandum of Understanding on Fisheries and Aquaculture, which will now form the basis of our cooperation as neighboring countries in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture. Your proposal 
for designation of Namgoma Peshka SA and or its nominee in collaboration with the Namibian fishing company Namgoma Peshka Pty Limited made under section 35.2 of the Marine Resources Act 2000 of the Republic of Namibia read together with article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding on Fisheries and Aquaculture is acceptable. Let us therefore work together towards the successful, successful operation of a truly Angolan and Namibian fishing company to harvest our resources for the benefit of our people and contribute to our government's efforts to ensure food security for our people. Luanda, July 3, 2014, yours comradely, DRA Victoria de Baroche Neto, Minister of Fisheries. In these companies here, there are proposals that were accepted. Is this the correct procedure that is adopted in terms of when the quotas are alloc allocated in terms of a bilateral agreement? My Lord, as I was briefed and explained by the PS that that was the procedure to be followed. Now what the state alleged and is alleging is that there was a syndicate and this syndicate also involved Angolan nationals concerning the Nemgomar project. Are you aware thereof? I have read about it, my, my lord. In the discoveries and the indictments. And one of the parties involved in the syndicate, alleged to have been involved in this syndicate, is uh, Victoria de Barros Neto. Are you aware thereof? I have read about it, my lord. With the allegations. Do you know whether or not a warrant of arrest has been issued for her? Not aware of. Any I have not heard anything on this. Any extradition proceedings relating to her or the other two accused persons in Angola? None, if I heard about that, my lord. Okay. And after you received this particular letter, in whose possession or where was this letter then stored? My Lord, this letter was again referred to the office of the Prime of the PS. And at that point in time, was it still the same PS? My Lord, correct, my Lord. Mm. Madam Uritara Hivero. Uritara. Just a quick question. Uh, oh, but of tracking back, Mr. Yesau, you said the permanent secretary was the one that decided on the delegation Correct. The office. You also testified that there were on two instances that you traveled to Angola. Correct, my In 2013 Lord. and then in 2014. Mm -hmm. Did the permanent secretary travel with you on those two instances? To my recollection, she was party to the to the to 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 to, to, the, to the visit to Angola. To the visit. To the two visits. Correct, my lord. Okay. Yes, you also testified that her name was listed in one of the letters. Yes, my lord. Okay. As you please. My lord, if there's no objection, we beg leave to hand up the letter from the Minister of Fisheries of Angola to the Minister of Fisheries of Namibia, dated three July twenty fourteen. We mark this exhibit B. Is it not you? Is it V or you? Oh, you, we decided we will no longer the assignment of powers. It should be you, my lord.
And can you please turn the page or to the next divider? Can you please identify the document for us? Republic of Namibia, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, dated 7th July 2014. Master Ricardo Gustavo, Director, Namgoma Peshka SA, Rua Americo Julio de Carvajo, N138, Bairo Azul, Igom Otas, Luanda, Angola. Dear sir, subject, Os Mackerel Quota 2014 fishing season. I have the pleasure to inform you that the minister has approved the allocation of Os Mackerel Quota of 7,000 to your company. This quota allocation is made as part of the Namibia-Angola bilateral agreement. Acceptance in writing of the allocation must reach this office before or on Thursday the 10th of July 2014, not later than 1,500 hours. Yours sincerely, Uritara Hiverwa, Permanent Secretary. The 7,000 metric ton that was awarded to, where does that quantity come from? How was it determined? Apologies. My Lord, to my logic, it came from the internal memo. That was whereby it was recommended by the permanent secretary for the acceptance of the minister. Let's just quickly confirm that. Go to 19, divider 19. You can keep your hand there beneath divider 21, but at the same time, go to divider 19, page 2. What is the amount there that was recommended by the permanent secretary to you? My Lord, allocation. 42,000 to non right holders to be allocated as follows. Just the one under Namibia Angola bilateral agreement. 7,000 metric tons to Namibia and Angola bilateral agreement. Okay. And that amount is the same as the amount here that is awarded in this letter? Correct, my lord. Okay. <clears throat> and, my lord, can I add any inquiries pertaining to this allocation of quota? was referred to Mrs. A. Erastus, who was the Director of planning, Policy Planning and Economics. Okay. <clears throat> and Mr. Ricardo Gustavo, who is Mr. Ricardo Gustavo that the letter was directed to as a director? Do you know him? My Lord. I never know Ricardo Gustavo. You never knew him? Yeah, prior, prior, prior to this very letter. And on the date of the letter, did you know him? My Lord, I was on my way outside to, to a meeting, a cabinet committee meeting, or to one of the cabinet committee activities. And the PS then... Just, just take a little bit slower. You were on your way. I was on my way to a... Cabinet committee meeting? Cabinet committee meeting, to my re recollection. You can proceed. And the PS, can recall, came to, with me, to, to my office with a tall man. He's 
at all. And I was informed that this is the person of Namgoma Pesh Peshka SA. But I never had the opportunity to sit down with him, at least to get the, the proper back, background of this very, very Peshka, Namgoma Peshka SA. Because I was in a hurry, I had my back, and I was on my way out. So that was the, a very brief, brief, brief intro to him, and that's it. Where was he brought to your office? Or where did you meet him? Was it outside your office? No, it was in, in, in the ministry building, fourth okay. floor. At office 435. Resolution 435, my lord. And that is where the then permanent secretary introduced you briefly to Mr. Ricardo Gustavo. Yeah, she, she, correct, correct, my lord. Uh, uh, I was briefly, briefly introduce but not even in detail mm -hmm. to tell this is Ricardo what 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 I never knew okay. I happen to know him only now when we are incarcerated incarceration now. proper was it on on the seventh or a day after when was it uh, my lord you can't is recall you can say you can't recall yeah it's 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 long yeah it's a long time yeah, I can't recall you know okay. old age is also catching up here and if you turn the page, Can you please identify the document for us. Namgoma Peshka, I mean Namgoma S.A. Peshka, 8 July 2014. Master Uritara Hiverwa. Mrs. Ulitara Hivera, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Private Bank 13355, Renduk, Namibia. DM, Madam Hivera, Subject, Horse Mackerel Quota 2014 Fishing Season. Thank you for the allocation as contained in your letter 7 July, which the Namkoma Peshka Group hereby accept. We will shortly be applying for the licensing of the vessel in accordance with the Marine Resources Act 2000. The fraternal relations persist between Namibia and Angola will further be strengthened through our commercial interaction as Namibians and Angolans. Yours sincerely, Ricardo Gustavo, Director. This letter, my, my Lord, was received, was received by the office of the minister and it has been on the 8th of 7, 2014, addressed to the PS. And if you turn the page, can you please identify that document for us? My Lord, on the 7th, Republic of Namibia, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Office of the Minister. Honorable Victoria de Barros Neto, dated the 7th of July 2014, Minister of Fisheries, Casa Postal 83, Luanda, Angola. Dear Honorable Neto, reference is made to our last meeting and in particular the signing of the Namibia-Angola bilateral agreement on fisheries in Rwanda. I would like to inform your good office that I have allocated 7,000 metric tons of horse mackerel quota to poor print investment PTY Limited, trading as, trading as OT stroke A, Namgoma Peshka Namibia joint venture, 
Company Registration Number 2014-0304. I take this opportunity to renew to you, dear colleague, an assurance of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Bernard SOMP Minister of Minister, CC Uritara Hivelwa, Permanent Secretary, MFMR. Inquiries, Mrs. Ms. Madam Yu Uritala, reference nine stroke two okay. stroke two. Okay, thank you. And who prepared this particular letter? Who drafted it? This letter was drafted and prepared, prepared and drafted by the office of the permanent secretary. And at that particular point in time, let, let me, at that point in time, were you aware that poor print investments or Nemgomar Peshka Namibia, that its director was Ricardo Gustavo? In terms of the correspondence, in terms of the correspondence, and as he was briefly, briefly, in fact, introduced. I happen to have a picture of him being a director of Namgoma Peshka. Was that after the seventh? As I have stated, my lord, in fact, the seventh of July 2014, <clears throat> a letter was drafted by the PS to him. And after this letter was handed over, as I've said, it was, I happened to be introduced briefly by him, if my memory serves me well, the seventh, my lord, because I cannot remember now whether was it during the time when the letter was handed over or was it after. It's a very difficult to respond to that, my lord because it was very, to remember all these details, it's very difficult, my lord. But I, what I'm trying to say is that I was introduced, generally, very briefly. <clears throat> okay. And if you turn the page, Can you please identify the document for us? Again, a document from the Ministry <coughs> of Fisheries and Marine Resources from the Republic of Namibia to <coughs> Ricardo Gustavo on the 19th of December 2014. The address is to Gustavo, Director Namco Mapeshka SA in Luanda, Angola. Dear Mr. Gustavo, what's my quota allocation 2015 fishing season? I have the pleasure to inform you that the minister has allocated horse mackerel quota of 8,000 metric tons to your company for the 2015 fishing season. Quota allocation is subject to the condition that the progress report on the reciprocal activities should be submitted to the ministry not later than the 30th of June 2015. This condition is in accordance with the agreed sign by the two parties. Acceptance in writing of the allocation and the conditions pertaining thereto must reach this office before 31st December 2014, not later than 5 o'clock, 1700 hours. Yours faithfully, Mrs. Uritara Hivera, Permanent Secretary. Inquiries, A. Erastus, Mrs. A. Erastus. And over the years, who would normally issue these letters to Nam Gomar for the allocation of the quotas? Over the years, it is the Office of the Permanent Secretary. 
or an acting permanent secretary from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. And Marine Resources, my Lord. My Lord, if there's no objection, I beg leave to end up the first four letters to be marked as V1 through to 4, my Lord. The rest of the letters are also just quote allocations. But we can just take the first four, my Lord. V1. V1. Second one, V2. Yes. Third one, V3 and V4. So much. I must hear so. As these horse mackerel quotas were being allocated to Nemgomar in terms of the bilateral fish, bilateral agreement, were you aware how they were conducting their business? Can you repeat the question? Were you aware A lot? Mm -hmm. how Nemgomar was conducting their business as they were being awarded these fishing Quotas. I was not aware, my lord, how they were conducting the business with these quotas, whether they were adding value to the quotas, or whether they were just selling it out of straight out of value, which was in fact not in my in support of my of 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 of, 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 of my approach to fisheries. Were you in any form or manner whatsoever briefed by your permanent secretary? Can, can my lord can you repeat because I'm... Were you briefed by the permanent secretary in relation to what happened with these quotas that were awarded to Nem Gomar? My lord, I was not really briefed, briefed by my peers on the operations of this Nemkoma quarters. If you turn over to file divider 22, oh, that's already been marked as an exhibit. So it has 23, you can turn over to 24. Are you there, my Lord? My Lord, this document has already been testified on yesterday. It's one of the documents that I said that I will leave until today. Um, if that may then be marked as Exhibit W, if there's no objection from the side of my learned friend. It's the internal memorandum with a list of agreements between Namibia and other countries. Apologies, my lord. Exhibit number? W. Didn't we were just skip, with... Didn't we skip some alphabet? <laughs> no, my lord, we were with V previously, V1, V2, V3, those four letters. Mm. And after V, phew, I believe it's W, my lord. Is it not? <laughs> I must go back and ask my grade three son. Do we have X? Yes, it is V. The previous one is V. My Lord, where the confusion comes in is these two documents in between there are O and P. O and P. So, o and P, so they don't follow the sequence. The ones under 22 and 23. Yes, yes but the previous document we marked was V. So this is W. W, my Lord, indeed. Okay. So much. Yes.
Now, I want you to go to number 26. Are you there? Correct, my Lord. Yes. I'm at and for the sake of brevity, we will just to save some time. This is an affidavit by Dr. Albert Kawana. And in that particular affidavit, which was disclosed to us, he indicated that it was highly irregular for Mr. Sakir Shangala, the then chairperson of the Law Reform Development Commission, to prepare the other document that we've pre referred to that you also said you've never seen something like it before. Do you recall? Correct, my lord. Do you have any comment on that? All what I can say, my lord, is that I am in concurrence with Dr. Albert Kavana because of the irregularities of two emblems on, on, on a letter uh, uh, sent to two ministers of two different countries. My Lord. So you deem that particular letter also irregular? My Lord, from this observation by Dr. Kawana, who was the former minister responsible for justice, former minister of presidential affairs, an attorney general, I think his observations sound reasonable. Now, you also testified that the permanent secretary invited Mr. Shangala on these two missions, at least. Was that regular proceedings or procedure? My Lord, if the Permanent Secretary has invited a civil servant to be party to a delegation, a mission to any given country, I am of the understanding that the PSS, the accounting officer, must have really link, linked up with those very supervisors of that very ministry. Hence, including people in such delegations. I had the experience, my Lord, just for as a footnote to my secondary. Uh, uh, I went to Mozambique. There were people within the delegation I never knew. I never knew people in the delegation, but they were from Namibia, with me to Mozambique, on the bilateral matters pertaining to Mozambique and Namibia. And I never knew. I did. Well, I left my hand, and that's it. Hmm. Is there anything else that you want to comment on this particular affidavit by Dr. Kawana? My Lord, in terms of page or para, I mean, uh, I don't know how to find it. Doesn't page two, five, page three or five. The second paragraph. The second sentence, my Lord. During the process of scrutiny, my office was informed that Angola preferred a non-binding agreement. My Lord, in the process of scrutiny of that very agreement, I was not, in fact, in that equation of scrutiny. 
of this agreement. For Dr. Kavana to come to this conclusion of a non-binding agreement. I assume he must have spoken to somebody who was party to the team of negotiations. I assume. I don't want to confirm. I don't want to deny, but I assume something must have happened. Comment on that one. My Lord, on the very same paragraph, the client copy from the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources is hereby attached. And scrutinized copy with a covering letter from me to the then Minister of Fisheries dated 11 December 2013 is attached copy of the MOU between Namibia and Angola with minor changes has been signed on the 14th of June 2014. It's also attached. 14th, but our, cop our thing was signed, our agreement was signed on the, on the 18th. Mm -hmm. Further, on page four or five of this, it states that the second paragraph in the letter of the ninth June twenty fourteen from Master Bonif Bonifacio Samte the then acting permanent secretary in the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, to Ambassador Selma Ashipala Musavi, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Fisheries, I mean Foreign Affairs, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Sakir Shangala was listed as part of the delegation that went on a working visit to the Republic of Angola for the signing of the MOU on agriculture and fisheries. It's also something. See attached letter, date, see attached letter annexure DAK5. I do not know as in what capacity Mr. Sakyu Shangala, part of the delegation, as to my knowledge, he was never authorized to represent my office in the discussions and signing of the MOU on behalf of the Namibian government taking into account that he was only the chairperson of the Law Reform and Development Commission. I did also observe from the list that no person from the Office of the Attorney General was included in the delegation to give some legal advice as per the normal standard procedure. This is what I could pick up from the affidavit of Dr. Gawana, dated the 7th day of August 2020. And do you agree that the document that was signed by yourself, whether it's a valid binding agreement or not? It is a valid binding agreement since it was already concluded between Namibia and Angola prior to the 18th of June 2014. Mr. Yesau, have you had an opportunity to read the summary of substantial facts, what the state is alleging in respect of the offenses against you and your co-accused? Have you read it? I tried to read, to read it, my lord. I tried to read the substantial facts on the accusations to me in terms of Namgoma and in terms of fish corps. But I'll focus on Namgoma, my lord. It refers to a purported agreement, okay. the non-binding agreement, which was concluded for the benefit of myself 
for the benefit of my co-accused and not for the benefit of the Republic of Namibia in Angola. Okay. If I may just briefly take you through the summary of substantial facts and then I will allow you an opportunity to respond to the allegations that are leveled against you. No? What the state is alleging is that during 2011, an Icelandic fishing company, Samergi, HF, sought for an opportunity to explore in the Namibian fishing industry. During the said period, Temzen Haitukilipi, who is the son-in-law to Mr. Bernard Yesau, the erstwhile Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, was introduced to the representatives of Samergi HF, namely Jalgesen, Adelstein, Ingwa, Juliusen, and Joanna Stephenson at the meeting which resulted in the Samergi representatives being introduced to the other Namibian role players who stand as accused persons in this matter. Just to briefly inform you also, the accused persons in this matter, the main natural persons is Mr. Ricardo Gustavo, James Hatikulipi, Sakish Shangala, yourself is accused four, Temzen Hatikulipi accused five, and Pius Natangwe Motwe Lulo. And then the other accused in this matter is Namgomar Peshka Namibia, Irongo Cleary Forwarding, JTH Trading, Fiti Entertainment CC, and so it goes on. There is in respect of the Nam Gumar matter. Mm. Nam? <clears throat> Thank you, my lord. I do understand now. I'm together. So let me just finish this part and I will allow you an opportunity to comment. The accused, which includes yourself, acting with a common purpose, devised a scheme to access fishing quotas in Namibia in favor of Samergi and for the benefit of the Namibian co accused. This scheme resulted in the entering into a memorandum of understanding between the government of the Republic of Namibia through the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources and the government of the Republic of Angola through the Ministry of Fisheries on cooperation in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture, which was then signed on June 18 June 2014 by Mr. Yesau and Mrs. Tabaros Neto as representatives of their respective governments. Mm. As a result of the signing of the MOU, Mr. Bernard Yesau, under the guise that that MOU was a fisheries agreement, awarded fishing quotas to Nemgo Marpeska SA, a company purportedly incorporated in Angola as a joint venture agreement between Namibia and Angolan role players. My that Lord. is the crux of the allegations against you. Those very allegations against me that I was in conspiracy or in cahoots with those people mentioned in that very, very write-up. It's totally untrue. The fisheries agreements, my lord, it's coming a long, long way. It has been a mandate, a directive from our principal, the founding father, in terms of the SADAC protocol of 2001 on, on fisheries. That protocol has given birth to the Namibia, Angola, Protocol on Fisheries, which was signed in 2007 by my predecessor. And out of that protocol that was signed in 2007, based on a fact-finding mission, because of the reasons of illegal fishing, because of the reasons of our what do you call it, uh, my lord, uh, the membership to enforcer. And because of other matters such as the chairperson, the chairmanship 
of the Minister of Fisheries of Angola to BCC, the Benguela Current Commission. That, in fact, has prompted the fact-finding mission to go and to discuss this very matters and also to ascertain, to check whether that very protocol of 2007 is still, can still be used as an instrument to address this very matters. My Lord, the allegations, the accusations made against me in terms of conspiracy, in terms of establishing an enterprise on a common purpose, my Lord, this is uncalled for. I cannot and I will never, ever accept such kind of situations where I was arrested, my house was ransacked. This is a very important, my, 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 my Lord. I am really, I feel so, I feel sad. Having worked for our country from childhood to the time I was arrested, I can't believe, I can't, I can't see this happening. Uh, the fact that I have tried to illustrate to the court, the fact that I have tried to illustrate to the court that this agreement was an agreement that came about prior to my time even, through negotiations, through the engagement of government, especially the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mirko, and all the other technoc technocrats, this was the agreement which I was in fact directed to go and sign in terms of the Marine Resources Act, Section 35, and also finally gazetted in terms of Section 36 of the Marine Resources Act. You can continue now. Just quickly, you, were, you said you were directed to go sign. Who directed you to go sign it? It's the Assignment of Powers. I'm referring to that okay. Assignment of Powers Act which is also an exhibit, my lot, in this very case. And I'm called Fish Rod. Fish Rod. My family is called Fish Rod. Our dignity, our, my dignity is totally, totally, my lot, I can damaged for the rest of my life. Now, what the state is further alleging, and this is just from the summary of substantial facts, is that as a result of this scheme under the MOU, the Ministry of Fisheries, your ministry, allocated about 50,000 metric tons of horse mackerel fishing quotas to Nemgomar Pesca SA during the period 2014 to 2019, which was in actual fact received by Nemgomar Pesca's Namibia a company incorporated in Namibia and with a 100% Angolan shareholding. They further allege that the accused Namibian and Icelandic role players further agreed that the that $500 per metric ton that would be payable in respect of the fishing quota would only constitute 25% of the actual usage fee and that the remainder of the 75% of the actual usage fee that should be paid will be paid, that remaining fee will be paid into an offshore bank account which was subsequently established by Mr. James Hatukilipi as Tunduvala Investments, a company incorporated in Dubai with Mr. James as the sole shareholder. And that company, in essence, received about four million USD dollars. Now, were you involved in any discussions relating as to how fishing quotas it was awarded? Or, firstly, let me rather say, who awarded the fishing quotas to Nam Gumar? As I have, as I have testified, my lord. 
awarding was on, done by the office of the peers and the office of the administration, management of the Ministry of Fisheries, recommended to the Minister for Acceptance, that's number one, to right holders and to non-right holders, Namgoma specifically as well. And this very, through internal memos, which was not disclosed, my Lord, never disclosed by the in investigation of the year 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. But my name is being used in the letters again here that I have approved the allocation of quotas to that. I want to see the internal memos. Okay. Just, just hold on there, Mr. Yeso. When you are referring to the internal memos, is it the one that we've previously referred to for the 2014 period that was prepared by the peers? It is memos like that one. Memos like that one. Like that one which okay. went out. And these memos, are they then prepared annually by the permanent, permanent secretary? It is prepared seasonally. Seasonally, yes. okay. Maybe the right terminology, my lord. Okay, like for the horse mackerel season? For the horse mackerel, seasonally, starts from the January, first Janu January season to end of December. And if there is any quota left in the reserve, that in that quota is again uh, uh, distributed, my lord. That very, there is an internal memo supposed to be. There should be a, an internal memo. And it's on that basis that the quotas are then allocated? My, my Lord, it's on that basis that the letters that is sent to the right holders and non-right holders are prepared and then sent to the, right, to, 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 to the beneficiaries. And would there also be a separate one, for example, for Hague? Because the Hague Correct, season, my Lord. it's published and gazetted that the Hague season starts on the 1st of November, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, my Lord. Unlike the horse mackerel that starts on the 1st of January. Yes, my Lord. Okay. And I want to state, my Lord, based on the summary of the facts. My Lord, I was not responsible for any, any impropriety, any impropriety matters secondary matters that flows out from the allocation of quotas. I cannot shoulder blame on that, my Lord. It is unheard of. Put bluntly, Mr. Yersong, what the state is alleging is that your son-in-law, Mr. Thames and Atikilipi, he was the one that opened the door that gained and that allowed some energy and a group of companies to have access to the fishing rights and quotas in Namibia through you. My Lord, there was no mutual beneficial relations between me and my, and my son-in-law who in fact got married to my daughter in 2011 October, there was nothing like that, which I say, a mutual beneficial symbiosis, if I have to put it that way, between me and my son-in-law. Did he introduce the Samerji group of companies to you? He never introduced the group of that very companies to me. I happened, my lord, to bump in, into at his house in October 2015, if I'm not mistaken whereby I bumped in into Europeans from Europe. October 2015? Yeah, October 2015. Yes. Not 2011 or whatever they talk about. Now, while we're on this point, Mr. Willafir of the ACC came to testify that at that meeting, and he also showed a picture to the court that October, or at least October 2015, that at that particular meeting, there's where the scheme was discussed. 
total, with yourself. That is what Mr. Wolof will testify. A total misrepresentation of fact, my lord. It's a total misrepresentation of fact. When I went to that very residence of my son-in-law, it was, I was willing to read the witness statement of Mr. Joanna Stephenson, the whistleblower. My Lord, I have read that very statement, try okay. to read, try to comprehend, try to analyze what he's trying to do, okay. what he's trying to say. I have read it, my Lord. Okay. And in his statement, does he in any way or form whatsoever say that at this meeting at the house of Mr. Thames and Atukilipi in October 2015, where this picture was taken, does he say that there was a discussion on how to come up with the scheme of Nem Gomar. I could not pick, my lord, such kind of, an, of a matter in that very affidavit or whistleblower affidavit of Pastor Johannesson. Then why would, Mr. why would Mr. Willowfield tell these things to the Honorable Court in the, in the Magistrate's Court during your first bail application? My lord, that was a total blue lie, if I have to put it. That is per jury, per jury. We have now also gone through the summary of substantial facts. It indicates that this scheme was started in from 2011, so to say. What they have said in the summary of substantial facts. The agreement was then signed in 2014 as part of the scheme. So was it possible that the scheme could have been devised? there at Mr. Tamsin's house in 2015, October 2015, as testified to by an ACC official, Mr. Willefier. My Lord, 2015, October, the agreement was already in place. It was signed, concluded on the 18th of June, 2014. So I don't know where and how these investigators have gone to say that a scheme was designed, my lord, discuss and design at Thompson, Thompson Hatwikulipi's house in 2015, where else the agreement was there. Namgoma was already also allocated the uh, right and things. In fact, having read Mr. Stephenson's affidavit, the main whistleblower in this Namgoma matter, does he in this statement state from your recollection that he met with you or that you were involved in meetings with him where you discussed the setting up of this scheme? None. Nothing at all I've seen. Okay. I've seen that, my Lord. Do you know what was your son-in-law's involvement with the Zamerji group of companies? As I've stated, my lord, I met those people, the Zamerji, or oh, the Icelandics, at his house while I was dropping the kid, the son-in-law. I mean, my grandson, our grandson, and I met them and I happened to be taking a picture with one of them, Torstens or something like that is his name, I understand, in the, in, 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 in the documents there. Yes, it is, it is in yeah. the record. Yeah. Yes. Now, Mr. Thames and Aitukilipi, he came to testify that he worked as a consultant together with Mr. James Aitukilipi. Are you good, Mr. Uh, yes, sir. Or do you want to take a five-minute break? It seems. Please, my lord, because I'm feeling my lord, tired. May we just getting agitated, my lord. And it's not, and I don't want to get agitated. On just a five-minute break, my lord. Yeah, my lord, I want. Mm. As please the court. <laughs>